Hi everyone, it's Sami Khan with the Fox 10 News Now update. We're going to take you now to Ferguson, Missouri, where the governor of Missouri, Governor Jay, Dix Jay Nixon, is expected to speak in just a moment. I'm expecting great pictures. Like <clears throat> now you can see they're setting up everything for his press conference that's scheduled at 4.30 here. For those of you who are just tuning in, the grand jury in Ferguson has reached a decision today on whether to indict Officer Darren Wilson. Darren Wilson is the police officer who shot and killed an unarmed 18-year-old Michael Brown. Um, as you may remember, this shooting resulted in riots not only locally in Ferguson and St. Louis, but also nationwide, becoming an issue of civil rights and, uh, you know, people protesting in terms of, you know, racial discrimination because Michael Brown was black, the officer was white, and Michael Brown was unarmed. Now, the grand jury was deciding whether or not to press charges against Darren Wilson. Um, now, there's no debate as to whether Michael Brown was armed or not. He was unarmed. But what there is a debate over is exactly what happened in the moments leading up to the actual shooting. Now, some people are saying that Michael Brown reached for Wilson's gun and Wilson shot in self-defense, whereas, you know, other people, witnesses actually told police that Brown had his arms up and was in surren a surrender position when he was shot. So, now if Wilson is indicted, he could be charged with a number of crimes that could be first degree murder, second degree murder, voluntary murder. All right, so we think we're about three down. minutes away. Is everybody voluntary. getting close? Everybody feel comfortable? As you know, these officials are very busy. There's a lot of stuff going on. You guys probably have other places to go. They're just going to have brief statements. We'll try to take a few questions and then we'll have to move on. Do you guys all have other places to head to? So it should work out for everybody. We should be at like two and a half now. All right, now as you heard, uh, the governor is expected to take the stand in about two and a half minutes. So in the meantime, I wanna go ahead and show you exactly what this, you know, this whole incident has caused riots everywhere. Um, locally, like I said, in Ferguson and the St. Louis area, but also nationally, uh, people were having protests in each and every city. You know, you can see in the video just passionate people, you know, these riots, people rioting, looting, you know, in some cases it turned violent. Local business is actually preparing just in case, uh, you know, in anticipation of today's decision, rather, because there is the possibility of rioting and protesting after the decision is announced. Um, the grand jury could decide not to indict Officer Darren Wilson, which, if that's the case, it is believed that many people will be protesting, will potentially riot, so it's, um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. We're being told that the decision will officially be announced in a few hours. In the meantime, governor, um, the governor is expected to address the, the crowd in just a minute or so. So let's go back there. We're just waiting for the governor to arrive and take the stand.
Um, good evening. Uh, <clears throat> I'm pleased to be joined this evening by St. Louis Mayor Francis Slay, St. Louis County Executive Charlie Dooley, uh, and Missouri Director of Public Safety Dan Isom. Later this evening, the St. Louis County Prosecutor will announce the grand jury's decision. While none of us knows what that will be, our shared hope and expectation is that regardless of the decision, people on all sides show tolerance, <clears throat> mutual respect, and restraint. Earlier today, I visited with some folks in Ferguson, and it's understandable that, like the rest of us, they are on edge waiting for a decision. But they are doing their best to go about their daily lives, conduct their business, and support one another and their community. I also spoke with a number of faith leaders late this afternoon who offered their prayers for peace and safety. Together, we are all focused on making sure the necessary resources are at hand to protect lives, protect property, and protect free speech. Several churches will be providing safe havens throughout the area to provide food, shelter, and medical care. Mental health providers have teamed up to help ease the emotional strain that these events have caused. These health professionals are working right now to provide counseling and other services to the people that need them. Law enforcement officials continue to maintain open lines of communication with protest leaders to improve the interactions between police and demonstrators and prevent violence. I want to thank my Director of Public Safety, Dan Isom, for taking part in these ongoing discussions. State and local law enforcement agencies are continuing to work hand in hand to make sure the best, most experienced officers are on the street. The men and women of the National Guard will also be in the area to provide security at critical facilities like firehouses, police stations, and utility substations and offer logistical and transportation support as needed. This will help free up law enforcement officers to do their jobs effectively. In closing, I'd like to reiterate my call for peace, respect, and restraint, and thank everyone out there who is working hard to make sure communities throughout the region are safe and secure. I'd now like to ask County Executive Dooley to make a couple comments, and I'll call on the rest of our folks, and we'd be glad to take a few questions. The County Executive of St. Louis County, Charlie Dooley. Let me say good evening to all of you. I do not know what the prosecuting attorney will have to say this evening, but I do know this. No matter what is announced, people will be emotional. I want people to think with their heads and not with emotion. No matter what, we have to remain focused on our long-term systemic changes that has to take place in our community. Our immediate priority is to ensure that people are safe and able to voice their concerns in an orderly fashion. Police and community groups have been working for weeks to ensure the rights are protected. We are committed to de-escalating negative situations in a responsible manner. I do not want people in this community to think they have to barricade their doors and take up arms. We are not that kind of a community. I do not want people to accidentally shoot or harm someone out of fear. This is not the time to turn on each other. It is a time to turn to each other. We are one community. Again, our main priority at this time is to ensure that we keep people safe and protect property. We intend to do that. But it is to be said and to be clear that in achieving these objectives, we, are, we recognize the right of people to peacefully assemble and to express free speech rights. We will honor that as long as safety and security are not jeopardized. I personally believe that people in this community will do what is right. In October, there were thousands of people here peacefully protesting and expressing their views. No one was hurt. 
Many, many people have spent countless hours working on ways to manage this situation once the grand jury decision is announced. And now is the time to show the world that we can act without being destructive. I am confident that this will be a fact. Thank you. Thank you. Now the great leader of the great city of St. Louis, Mayor Francis Slay. Thank you, Governor, and good evening. <clears throat> St. Louis is a region that endures during challenging times. We have seen it time and time again. We have seen it in the face of personal tragedy, and we've seen it in the aftermath of natural disaster. We face one of those times today. What happened to Michael Brown has deeply divided us. Whatever is announced this evening, some people are going to be angry and frustrated. And some people are going to be angry and frustrated about that. My message to the protesters, we will protect your right to peacefully assemble and to speak your mind. Like last night, we will give you leeway to occupy public safety, and we will listen to your grievances. But turning violent or damaging property will not be tolerated. To the people who disagree with the protesters, the actions we are taking are designed to protect you, to protect your family, your homes, your businesses, and your neighborhoods. That is our paramount concern. Over the next few days, we expect to see St. Louisans loudly and passionately expressing their views. We expect to see some of the best police officers in the country protecting their rights and keeping everyone safe. But after that, it will be time to heal, to close the racial divide, and to make St. Louis a better place for everyone, regardless of race or color. We all may experience some inconvenience during the coming days. Depending on the circumstances, we may allow demonstrators to slow down traffic, but we will not allow them to hurt anyone or damage anyone's property. That's how it went last night in the Shaw neighborhood. It wasn't perfect. There were two acts of vandalism, but there was no other property damage, and most importantly, no one was seriously injured. When President Abraham Lincoln first proclaimed a National Day of Thanksgiving, in 1863, it's worth recalling that he sought to help a nation heal and to work together toward the promise of what he called a large increase in freedom. The world will be watching us. They are going to watch how we handle our disagreements in the coming days and how we make needed change in the coming months and years. St. Louis finds itself with an opportunity to show the nation the ways in which a community can be more fair and more just for everyone. We must seize this opportunity together. Now one more speaker, and I'll be glad to take questions here. Uh, the Director of Public Safety of the State of Missouri, uh, Director Dan Isom. Thank you, Governor. I've spent my entire life as a resident of the city of St. Louis and served 24 years as a member of the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department, retiring as chief of police. The St. Louis County Police, the St. Louis City Police, and the Missouri Highway Patrol have spent the last two months planning and training for the anticipated reaction to the announcement that will be made in the next few hours. The plan is designed for all contingencies, but we hope that officers will only observe peaceful protests. I have great confidence in the design of this plan. It has prioritized keeping all people safe, residents and protesters, the protection of property, and ensuring that people can exercise their constitutional rights. I also have tremendous confidence and the men and women in St. Louis law enforcement. They understand the importance of protecting everyone, and I know they intend to do so. I also have great confidence in the people of my community. 
A tremendous dialogue has begun to take place here about mo more than just policing. This community understands that through peaceful protest and through dialogue, we will continue to grow and that violence will set this progress back. We must continue to move this community forward and I have confidence that that is exactly what we will do tonight and in the days ahead of us. I would be glad to take questions. Yeah, Rock. Governor, I'm wondering, was there any thought of delaying this till tomorrow morning? It seems like the uh, element of darkness at night makes it possibly more dangerous for the protesters if they do show up and the police officers as well as people just standing around. Uh, those were decisions made by the St. Louis County Prosecutor's Office, um, and, I'm, and, and that is who made that call. So, um, in that sense, yeah, Jace. Um, Governor, what would you say to the thousands of people and the millions of people around America who felt like the government has failed them over the last three and a half months, and the, the judicial system has failed them over the last three and a half months? Well, our focus is not about what happened over the last three and a half months. I think the last three and a half months is has provided additional training, has provided additional sensitivity and additional knowledge on everybody in front. Our focus today uh, in the short run here is to protect lives, protect property, and to protect speech. And in the longer run, as the mayor said, uh, to find uh, paths for progress. So uh, uh, my, our focus is on, on those clear principles as we move forward. Yes, ma'am. How are you going to move forward in terms of healing the race to revive? What sorts of steps are you going to take? Well, well, I said tonight is about uh, uh, the, the pieces that are in place to do what we've got to do. Clearly, all of the folks behind me, as well as uh, significant leaders in the community, uh, have, have begun that process. Um, I had a chance right before I came in here, uh, the conference call with a number of faith leaders who are working deeply and, and with long hours to do just that. Um, we have, uh, with the Office of Community Engagement here, uh, with Senator Coleman doing that on a daily basis. All of these folks behind me have been outreach and, and in the community listening and working, uh, and also the commission that I've appointed. Uh, I fully expect that with their independent voice and their uh, clear uh, ability uh, to chart a long-term path forward, uh, that we will all have suggestions uh, which can lead us in a positive path forward. Yes, sir. Have you ruled out the use of armored vehicles and tear gas? Um, you know, I'm not going to get into operational details, but I, um, the bottom line is that the, the police have been trained, as the mayor said and as others said, uh, to make sure that we are respecting people's rights to uh, communicate um, and that allowing them uh, to do that. However, on the other side, if, if people uh, are, are violent or, or threaten property, um, uh, you know, then, then resources will be used to, to manage the issues. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I've been here, I believe, seven of the last eight days, uh, and uh, um, we'll be here uh, uh, tonight uh, and uh, as long as it takes uh, to make sure that we move through this particular phase, uh, whatever it may be, into, into the next phase. We've got time for yeah, one more yeah, question. Joe. Excuse me. Uh, Governor, Joe, 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 Joe quick first here, Joe. Wouldn't the lack of an, yes. of an indictment be a justification of police violence and lead to I've more called on this man as first. Just if okay. I here. I'm from Revolution newspaper, Larry Everett. And so wouldn't a lack of indictment mean fear for black people all over this country and effectively a green light to further police violence? And second, I would like to pose to you how you would respond to the call by Carl Dix and many others from the Revolutionary Communist Party that if Darren Wilson is not indicted for murder, the country be brought to a halt through energetic civil disobedience by millions of people. I do not know what the grand jury has ruled, nor do I know what the prosecutor is going to announce at 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah, Joe. Uh, can you say now roughly how many National Guard will be at least on standby, so to speak? I know the mayor has said before he's asked for 400, and uh, how long do you think they may be needed? Well, I mean, as I said before, we'll have uh, Guard Resource here that will play a support role um, for example, <clears throat> providing utility substation security. Um, as we know on Halloween, uh, the power went out 
here in Ferguson, um, most of the proof would indicate that that was not accidental, uh, nor was it a squirrel running down a, uh, a wire or whatever happens sometimes. Uh, also, police substations and stations, uh, the guard can provide uh, support roles there so that those police officers can get out into the community. Uh, and also things like firehouses uh, where those, if, if called upon, both the EMT and the fire resources need to get there in real time and, and providing that security. So in roles like that, support roles like that, the guard will be out there. Our hope, uh, you know, is that it is for a shorter period of time uh, as, as is necessary and that uh, that backup role is the, uh, is, is all that will be necessary. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Governor Jay Thank Nixon you, has just Appreciate wrapped it. up a live press conference addressing uh, the Ferguson grand jury verdict. Now, we're going to actually carry that decision live here on Fox 10 News. Now, we'll be, have that decision at 7 p.m. So please join us at fox10phoenix.com. You can find, out, find us here. And if you want more and the latest on this Ferguson decision, you can watch Fox 10 or go to fox10phoenix.com and we'll have more on our 5 o'clock newscast. Thanks.